What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. Welcome to this episode of 31 Days of Horror. And today we're going to go through my top five horror scores slash soundtrack. We all love a good score. We love a good soundtrack. The score is really the heartbeat of these horror films. What I'm going to give you here is probably they're going to be iconic. There's only five I could pick and it was tough to really pick five. Let me tell you. But these ones are just absolute classics. And I just love a great horror score. So how did I come to pick these? I pick my musical scores of how well it works in the movie, how musical it is, how much I love to listen to it. Can I listen to it in my car as well? That's just one piece of the puzzle, though. Sometimes scores will work better in the movie than they do just listening to it. So anyways, let's get started with these scores, man. So coming at number five is the score for The Omen. This one is done by Jerry Goldsmith. I think he won an, an Oscar or he got nominated for an Oscar back in 76 for this. A great score that's very opera-like. I got the choir going. The haunting melodies in it, though. The almost chanting-like thing. This really plays in to the movie of The Omen. And the score works great, too, in the movie. It works fantastic in the movie. The one reveal where the nanny who's been looking after or Damien at the end where she comes into the light and that music starts coming in. And even when there's happy times in the movie and there's certain, you know, more bright that bring out more of a a joyful sound to you, you know what I mean? And there's um there's actually one song in the on the soundtrack that's pretty good too. When when the Piper dreams or something like that. When the Piper dreams something like that. But uh the Man, that the, the main theme to the omen though, with the choir and, and, and the the singing and, and then the violins coming in, it's just great. Coming at number four is the thing. Now I really love the thing score. This is one of the scores that works better in the movie than it does just listening to it. I could still listen to the score, you know, the boom bump, the main theme. Boom 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 boom. Boom, boom. Could you imagine a hundred people all sitting there doing that? Boom, 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 boom. I love that. And to me, that's the heartbeat, right? That dun, dun. It's just this slow, rhythmic, pulsating um, effect that's happening. Anil Morricone doing the score here, who did, who worked with Sergio Leone on a lot of those spaghetti westerns. This really creates that atmosphere. It really creates that mood with that music. And, the, and, and something like an organ coming in. No, no, don't, don't, damn. You know, it's very eerie. It's very shrieky, haunting, eerie. It, it can really get under your skin. Really plays well into the movie. Like the, the scores. And there's a, a part in the movie where that goes away for a lot of it. Our main theme. And then at the end, it comes back. So the U John Carpenter utilizes it very well. It's not a score that I play every day or anything like that. I do like listening to it in my car, it, but it, I get a real eerie. I get a sense of coldness probably because of, you know, what it's the thing, right? And all that. But I always loved the thing score. It is really good. Coming at number three is John Carpenter's Halloween score from 1978. I prefer the original Halloween score. I know a lot of people like other ones in the movie. Halloween 2 is pretty good with the synths and everything like that, but the Halloween score is pretty awesome. And I know a lot of people, you're going to have this number one, and that is fine. I wouldn't argue with Halloween being number one. It's one that I can listen to. It's just as much as it works in the movie. It works just listening to. It's so symbolic of Halloween now. Every Halloween, people, you put on that score, everyone knows what it is. You know what I mean? It's a classic opening with the pumpkin and just the din 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 And that's what everyone talks about. But the real heart, the best part of the score is the bum 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 dum bum. You know what I mean? Where John Carpenter lets that note ring and then he comes in, he overlays it with bum 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 dum dun dun Oh, that is fantastic, that part. And, you know, the one Jamie Lee's walking home and everything. And then he amps up when we see Michael. When the chase starts, the dun, da dun, dun. Simplicity, everyone. Simplicity is your best weapon. It can be so effective. 
there's probably four notes in Halloween, four or five notes in the whole thing. It's the way you're using the notes, how musical you make it. You know what I mean? And it's so musical, the score, right? It's just, it's amazing. So like I said, I won't argue that this is, that be this be your number one, but I have two that are just, I think are just better, to be honest with you. So coming at number two is A Nightmare on Elm Street. I love everything about this score. This score is so musical. Charles Bernstein, who did Cujo, did a lot of scores. What he did here, man, that main theme, bow, 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 down, 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 down. You know what I mean? Now, at the time of the recording this, I just saw Nightmare on Elm Street on the big screen um, at the movie theater for its 40th anniversary. And what an experience because of the music. It just filled the whole theater up with that score. You know what I mean? And when Charles Bernstein made this score, from a technical point of view, where musical theory we're talking about, there's notes in that main theme that are not supposed to go together. You're not supposed to put that note with that. They don't go together from a musical theory point of view. And he did that. Everything about this movie, they did the opposite. You know, having Freddy in the red and green sweater because the human eye can't focus on those two colors at once or something like that makes you uneasy. The score, it makes you unsettling and uneasy and it's eerie. I'll sit here in the dark and just listen to that score and my blood pressure goes up. That's why it's scary. That's why you're feeling this sense of uneasiness because it's it's the music in the score. It's the notes he's playing with. You know what I mean? And that's just the main theme. You know the part where Nancy's in the hospital, she's having the dream, she's in dream therapy or whatever. There's those little arpeggios and on the keyboards and everything that he's playing with. And then while she, you know, she's got, she's very tense because she doesn't want to fall asleep. But once she falls asleep, the music, it's almost dreamlike. It's just a beautiful score, man. And when she's making the traps, it goes into an 80s rock kind of thing. It, it's really good. And Nightmare on Elm Street 2 score is completely different than Nightmare 1. They kind of bring it back in number three, that main theme. But it is just a fantastic score. Now, can I listen to this on the way to work? In my car, absolutely I can. But it works really well within the confines of the story. It's absolutely awesome. Coming at number one, guys, is Psycho by Bernard Herrmann, who did this. This this score is ahead of its time. It still has a modern feel to it. You can put it on now. You could listen to it in your car. You could rock out to the freaking thing. And you could also, but it works so well within the movie. It's the perfect score for this movie. Not only is it a masterpiece of cinema, the score is a masterpiece, man. The main theme, awesome, man. It's got this sense of anxiety. It's got the, like, almost feels like someone's chasing you. And then he goes into, like, you know what I mean? awesome right but it's not just the main theme that's awesome you know what i mean it's like when vera miles goes up to mother's bedroom and that real eerie ominous score that's building going on inside of that is awesome when marion steals the money you know and she's getting changed and she's looking over at the envelope and the bump 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 dun 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 just awesome just you know, it's it's tension, really creating suspense and tension with that music. That's what's making you feel. That's what's getting inside here. That's what's getting you shivering and, and getting giving you all those feels of tension, right? I mean, the music, I can't stress how important the music is. And let's not just give credit to the shower scene for Alfred Hitchcock. Give the credit to Bernard Herrmann. That was him. Just listen, you know, that you know, the dun, 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 dun. All strings, all strings are for a reason. It gives you that shriekiness. It gives you that, 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 that tension. And if you look at the shower scene in, in three acts, right? When it starts, it's anxiety induced, right? Dun, 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 dun. And when it goes, dun, 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 that's her dying. And then, dun, dun, 
It comes right down to dynamics. Her heart stops. She falls. She's dead. Man, Bernard Herman, masterful score. The way he did that shower scene. Because the music is like the heartbeat. And when she finally succumbs to her death, just comes right down gradually. Then stops slowly. And man, I could imagine seeing this in the theater for the first time. That score and everything. I listen to this score on a daily basis. Like I listen to the Rocky score. I just so The Psycho score. And I have it on vinyl. It's awesome, man. Just what a score, man. What a score. Beautiful score. But that is it, guys. That is my top five horror scores. But what are yours? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a great discussion in those comments about horror scores and horror soundtracks. Having a good time with 31 Days of Horror. And I hope you are too, guys. So drop a like. Subscribe if you love this content. And if you're new to the channel, you know, same thing. Subscribe to the channel. I have tons of videos for you guys to watch. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I will put an end card below there for you to go down the rabbit hole, watch other videos. I'll see you next time, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.